Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Podcast series. This is Lakshat Pan from Azure Developer Community. We are back here again with another episode of the Tech Podcast series. In this, uh, all these episodes, we have been inviting all these industry leaders who are building awesome products. They have been, you know, in the startup ecosystem, they are revolutionizing all the industries and, and we are right now looking forward to, you know, uh, hearing these new terms like generative AI, blockchain, cybersecurity, and a lot more things, right? And today we have our industry speaker. We have an industry leader, Mr. Rupak, Rupak Naresh Gupta, the founder of MTAP Digital. And he has built a super awesome product that helps you network very smoothless. A smooth gives you a smooth experience and i do not i want you know to uh to kick off the things i would kindly request Rupak to introduce yourself first hi lecture thank you for having me over on the on your awesome podcast and you are doing a great job i listened to your past episodes and a uh, lot of value add that you are bringing to the table for a lot of our listeners out there um i am rupa gupta i am I love creating products. I created my first robot when I was in eighth grade, way back in 1989. And yeah. I never knew what entrepreneurship is at that point of time, but it is just the love of creating something from scratch uh, that led me to various things that we do. I, uh, I am very much tuned to the startup ecosystem. As a background, I did my engineering from India in Kolhapur. Um, at that point of time, uh, was got involved with, have you heard of Shrikhand? Yeah, yeah I did. Varna Shrikhand, right? So I got involved in making the pulp processing plant, wow. Varna Shrikhand, uh, way back in 1999, 2000s. Okay. Uh, then I was part of the core team that brought roaming in India with Bharti Telecom. Uh, one India, one Airtel slogan was a part of that given by our team. Uh, moved over to US, have been working in enterprise system for very long, uh, worked with Johnson & Johnson since 2004 till 2022. And I gave okay. up my job and career, which was pretty good in SAP, data analytics, and uh, all the all the supply chain management components and started MTAP. And what MTAP is? MTAP is just making networking very easy. So we have very good tools, very great CRM systems. We have awesome systems that can uh, take a lead further. But how do you get the lead to a CRM system? I'm talking to you right now. And when I'm talking to you over, <clears throat> over internet, I can send you my LinkedIn. I can send you 10 links very easily. But I cannot send you one link that can have my LinkedIn. It can have my video. It can have my presentation. Can I? without creating a small website of my own. But today with MTAP, you can. You can share one link, whether you are over the phone, I can put my systems, um, put your phone number and your name, and you will get the link right away. I can, when I'm meeting you in person, I can show you my digital business card, tap it on your phone, and you will get my information just with one click. Wow. And moreover, you can give me your information with one click. So it is a two-way communication. And yes, That's we cool. have integrations with OpenAI that will write the follow-up email for you. Wow. That's that's a fantastic product that you have built that makes networking so easy, right? Because whenever we, you know, in fact, we talk about this right now, we are connected through a digital communication channel that is internet, right? So uh, talking about uh, this, right, there are multiple links spamming that goes into spam and one never checks them out, right? So sharing one link would definitely work out as a best product in the industry. Talking about the inspiration perspective, right? So how did you, you know, got inspiration to start a product in, in this particular sector where, where people are not? So how it, how you led, led to the product, right? I believe that has been there in the mind for quite, quite a couple of years, right? Let's make something like this. How did you research and how did you land it into the product? Most of the great startups, they start from a pain point. And uh, any founder, they are trying to solve a real pain point. So I it also started the same way. I was were doing my MBA in Colombia. And after we finished my executive MBA in 2018, uh, yes, there were a lot of networking events and you were meeting great people. But when you come back from that event, one time I realized that I'm spending money and time in meeting people, but I'm not great at doing the follow-up the next day because right. uh, connection is about nurturing. 
when you make connections, it is the first contact, and it, then you nurture that contact. In order right. for you to make the first contact, good, you need to create a great impression. We did not have anything to create a great impression. Like I'll have to work extra hard where I'll have to make sure my LinkedIn profile is managed and I'm able to connect with LinkedIn, which was the go-to tool. But then what started happening is I realized a lot of people don't even respond on LinkedIn. They will make connections, but they will not respond. Then if I go to a networking event, I meet 10, 10 people, 15 people over there. It is very rare that the other person will receive an email about you. You'll get an email from them. Hey, it was nice meeting you. Right. Why? Because any connection prior to MTAP was a one-way street. I will give you my information. I will give you my paper business card. And you will give me yours. But then it goes into my paper. Or I write your name somewhere. And it is in my address book. I have 6,000 other contacts too. So <laughs> next day, I don't remember anything about you. Right. Right. So that was my pain point. The second pain point was when I'm trying to do the follow up, I do not have a great memory of remembering every conversation that I'm having during the day. Exactly. So right. I tend to forget the context. Yeah. So these were the two pain points. And that tried, then I tried to look for other solutions out there. So there are many solutions that were scanning the paper card, many of them. There are many solutions that were trying to create a great landing page for you. But there was no solution that was bringing all the things together where I can create my own landing page very fast, which is, is speaking to my brand, where I can have a centralized hub where all my contacts are nicely arranged, tagged, properly done. And there was no tool which was sending this information over to my CRM system or even to my email system. Got then it. I said, why don't I make a tool that encompasses managing my brand, uh, keeping the context of the conversation and doing immediate follow-ups rather than doing it the next day, and also scanning the paper cards. And then the third is, how can I nurture these contacts? Can I make sure that I have a tool that allows me to do easy follow-ups with all of them without spending a lot of minutes on each follow-up? And then the fourth point that came to my mind is, how can we leverage AI to do this? And okay. how can we take help of AI? How can we make that AI implementation so easy that you, without being a techie, can actually take advantage of it? And that's how MTAP was born. So wow. uh, the journey is always starting from a pain point. And then you go around doing customer discovery and customer validation as to whatever answer you have to resolve that pain point, the solution, the, do people like it or not? Right. So, uh, you know, the most unique feature that I loved about when I was exploring, when I was doing the, my homework for this podcast, right? I explored that you are utilizing the NFC technology, right? That simplifies the process a lot because digital cards are everywhere. In fact, the QR code thing has simplified a lot of work for us, right? We can just make it very easy. But again, there goes another effort. There goes another layer of effort scanning the QR code. And when, when, whenever, you know, human, this is the human psychology or whatever you call it, right? Whenever there is one step is just increased, people tend to forget it, right? And as you have clearly mentioned, if I'll give, that's what it really happens, yeah. So NFC technology is very unique. Not mm. in the way that NFC technology is unique. NFC technology existed for years to come. Right. But what has literally in the last couple of years advanced it is the Apple adoption of NFC reader making it native. So just remember the days when QR code, you had to download an app and do it rather than simply scanning from a camera. The same was with NFC. So every iPhone in today's world has after iPhone 10, Apple did is they made sure that NFC reader is always turned on and they made it towards the top of their phone. So yeah. that that allowed people to scan the car, any NFC card very easily. So that was one. Second is we still a lot of Samsung phones and a lot of other Android phones. They have NFC inside them, but it is turned off by default. 
So right. when the time will come that uh, even Androids will turn the NFC on by default, that when it will become much more easy. Right. And the benefit of NFC technology is it is an inter interface between the digital world and a physical world. And it mm. is not only used for uh, the business card component, but we are using it and I see much more usage in customer experience. So what do I mean by that? You can use an NFC tag or a sticker uh, in multiple ways. So for example, you can use it in a hotel at the reception for registering the user experience of the guest. You can use it inside the hotel room to give out instead of having all the brochures to have one place where user can tap and get all the information about the room, about the TV, about the restaurants and everything at one place. Right. For retailers, they can get a Google review very easily. Right. So uh, when we, uh, you know, when I was exploring, right, uh, about this NFC technology, when we talk about how do you think, you know, I just want, I'm really wondering about the the cost that really matters because when we talk from a US forefront, from a global forefront, it is definitely very much, uh, it's, it's not that easy. But when we talk about Indian ecosystem, here is a, it's very price sensitive market, right? How do you manage to tech? it and what what does the cost look like from an nfc card and what are the difference between a digital a normal paper card and a nfc powered mtap card <clears throat> so there are two answers to that the way i look at nfc nfc is gonna become a commodity so okay. today nfc is a premium product i'm looking of nfc as becoming a commodity you can purchase a nfc tag for 40 rupees 50 rupees from amazon and okay. you can use that NFC tag with MTAP app to uh, write the MTAP profiles in those tags. So that is an open market. So the okay. way you are going to get the QR code, similarly, you are going to get the NFC because it's mm -hmm. going to be super simple of purchasing an NFC device, customizing it to what you want, and using tools like MTAP to write the profiles on those devices. Get it. Now, when, yeah. So, uh, and the way, um, the difference between a paper business card and a MTAP NFC card is, on a paper business card, it is not an interaction. If I touch a paper business card, I will only get the information which is on my card. But right. with the MTAP, it is much more digital. You can not only showcase your phone number, email, your name, but you can also have all your social links. You can have all your different presentations, your brochures, your videos, everything at one place. So you are able to represent your brand completely. And NFC, MTAP NFC cards all come with a QR code. So if you are in a place where you do not have the phone with the NFC reader, you are able to use the QR code. Got it. Now, uh, when when because there is one more thing uh, I just noticed that is about the CRM integration that you have pro providing, right? How do you think if you can elaborate a little bit more significance from a professional standpoint, how the CRM integration with MTEP really work for the professionals? So I'm going to take up the example of the Zoho CRM. Uh, Zoho is a very prevalent and uh, top of the line CRM that is being used in India. Now, if you are a professional, you are going to have, uh, you are managing all your leads in Zoho. And when you're managing your leads in Zoho, you have your account and then you have your campaign. So the way integration with MTAP works is it's a one step process for any professional. You go to MTAP, you click your MTAP account and integrate it with your Zoho account by just entering your Zoho credentials. And your Zoho account is now linked with MTAP. All the leads that you are generating inside MTAP, all the contacts that you are creating inside MTAP, they will now start to flow into Zoho CRM. We are integrated to a point where you can actually choose which campaign of Zoho you want which contact to go in. Okay. Wow. Now, uh, you know, moving ahead to the next next part of the podcast would be, you know, you have also mentioned about the AI stand that you provide, right? Now, how has been how you are leveraging generative AI, or maybe that we call 
the norm the you know artificial intelligence in the mtap product as a whole and what are the significance of using it so the goal of uh, using ai is to make mtap your companion in doing networking so after one year when you are using mtap app you have a question about networking you can ask the app and app is going to give you the answer tailored to your personality so right. we have lot of people who are introvert lot of people who are not introvert but they are hesitant uh, in doing open networking and there are lot of people who have questions we are bringing mtap to a point where you have any question about networking you will ask to the app and app's chatbot will give you the answer to it so that's where we are using uh, generative ai to tailor the answers to your need wow. as a as a networking companion now, now yeah. yeah sorry go ahead so no no that's a more of a follow up question you please go ahead yeah uh, so the as of today what we are doing is if you sign up on mtap uh the profile creation that i was talking about was a very big pain point so for the first 5000 users when they were signing they all were complaining that can you make the profile creation much more simplified okay how i have to go sign up on an account then copy my linkedin copy my um, instagram bring in my logo change the colors it takes me about 20 minutes to half an hour to set up my profile uh what can you do for it so we went back on the table and we now started using ai components to create your profile and today i can say with proud uh, <clears throat> with very proud of my team that we were able to build a system where you can have your own custom profile in less than 90 seconds wow if you want to try that i am giving a open challenge to anyone that you go ahead if we are able to find your linkedin if your email linkedin the one that is you are registering with is public we will find your linkedin we will ask your website we will download the logo your profile picture your uh, social media from your website and we will customize the profile based on your logo colors wow that's a fantastic phenomenal all, experience all less than in 90 seconds wow and so we are able to do that because of ai and that is why we say that when you are on our platform you will get the most customized landing page feeling so 90 seconds is like a no time for anyone who wants to you know make a networking card right that's a that's a fantastic job of, i am really wondering what kind of magic you are doing behind the systems right and i will definitely yeah. like you to uh, if you when you are editing the podcast you should definitely try to create your own profile and show sure. it to the users of how you were able to create your profile and we, sure and we have our mobile apps as well as we have our website website is much more advanced in customizing your profile mobile apps are catching up we are concentrating on our mobile apps to be very highly advanced in networking mode so uh with mtap i'm going to talk about this i know you have not asked me this question but the way we have recently renamed our tagline is mtap provides you a structure to create new contacts with impact okay so mtap provides you a structure to create new contacts with impact what do i mean by that do you know how many people don't even think about segregating their leads or tagging them out properly <laughs> right? right and then um, they write notes but if i am talking to you where will i write the note about you right, right. i have no place so within mtap hub you can tag a person appropriately the way you want to do it you can create shared notes which are shared between two people right away so if i am doing the work you don't have to do the work and the third is there are private notes that are with me not only that mtap allows you to have multiple profiles so a lot of people are doing side hustles a lot of people are doing uh they are, so if you are uh, doing a side hustle you need a main profile and the second profile and mtap ecosystem allows you to use the same card but share the profile that you want to share at that time wow that's amazing oh that the transition is smooth right that i really want to now i definitely want to give it a try to the mtap product and after this recording right i will definitely give it a try 
and you know moving ahead with the with our our series of questions right because we have been in the industry for this long time we have built a product around this for our audience how do you think how do, what are your perspective about the the value of networking the value of relationship building how do you see is important in the industry at present so it's a old cliche right um your uh, what's your net worth yeah right so what's your, what is a net worth now there is a social equity and there is financial equity right now we should go after social equity that will lead to financial equity so what people try to do is they try to build finance equity thinking that will lead to social equity so the worth your worth is your net worth and the way to build network is not by quantity but by quality so when you are talking to people you got to be personable you got to open yourself you got to be vulnerable you got to be ready to share things about you it's not about transaction it is not about where you work how do you work so i always have this great story to talk about i learned this in one of my dale carnegie course so when you are meeting with people right and this is to all the audience our bigger problem that everyone was asking is what do i talk to a new person Right. is there a framework for that <laughs> how do i connect with someone whom i don't know right so we were told this story it has been about 12 years ago uh, in the workshop of dale carnegie and i still remember it so the way and allow me if i can have 2 minutes to tell that story yeah that, that, can, that can be a framework you can be used by a lot of people to do the networking it's a very stormy night and you are driving in a taxi and your taxi stops it is not moving but then you see a very uh, very nicely built house and it has a very rustic name plate in front of it and you look at the rustic name plate and you wonder such a nice house what is doing with the rustic name plate and the name is very clearly written on the rustic name plate and then you see these tiny hands on the big uh, glass walls of the house and when you got curious you go you knock into the house and the kids open up the house the kids were very happy uh, they were showing around the house you asked where is your mom and dad so kids were not speaking anything they took the guy uh, upstairs and when you went on the roof uh, upstairs the kids pointed out that hey they uh, uh, they were started pointing to the sky then all of a sudden there was this one plane and it you felt as if the plane is going to come and crash on you but instead of crashing the plane just left out the cricket kits uh over there and it plane flew off and you are like what's happening here you collect the cricket uh, kit you went down and you started playing them and then they offered you a very nice food uh, which was uh, and you could not forget what the food was and then you started seeing all the great work the all the <clears throat> places the parents have visited with the kids and they were all in the pictured photographs and there were nice big trophies of all the work uh, research work that the parents were doing and you were feeling very nice you said hi to the kids and you walked out so that's a story right but how do you connect it to networking the way to connect to networking is you first ask people their name remember the name plate the rustic name right. plate you ask people their name then right. you ask people the house where do they live right then you can connect with the kids then you connect with where they travel where they like to travel then you connect with them with the plane left the cricket kit that what kind of games they like to play what do they work what are their accomplishments what they like to do so that's how you create a network around you which is much more personalized no you, when you just don't go and talk about work with people when you are in business networking in a business networking you need to connect at a personal level with people uh, which is not only about work it's about knowing people we got to be able to listen very openly to what the other person is saying 
listening right. doesn't mean just listening listening means understanding and then replying back and asking the relevant questions based on what you just learned so uh, to that point i'm also actually writing a book on business networking in the age of ai wow when you are building a relationship a new network relationship so there are three pillars to it the three pillars are the first contact the nurturing and the maintaining but these three pillars are based on five key points that you need to keep in mind the first point that you need to keep in mind is why you are networking right are you networking to just know people are you networking for a political cause are you networking to get more leads why you are networking second is what's your mode of networking are you meeting them in person over the phone or on zoom and that is very important third learn about personalities every person has different personality and they tend to uh, be become more cozy to different kind of questions so that's an art that you need to learn i always recommend books on reading that that you need to understand the personality of people right you need to understand the culture of the person what kind of person they are coming from what is the background they have and based on the culture you can ask them the question so for example you are talking to a person in us and you don't talk about american football and baseball and you are not able to connect on those two terms chances are other than work you'll have nothing to talk about <laughs> right so you need to be understanding where the what the culture of the person is and then finally it is very important to connect on just the general vibe um you got to understand by the body language of the other person whether your conversation is making them interested or it is not making them interested and you need to be able to adapt and change so be very aware of the environment around you wow that's a really some cool mindful insights that coming from you right i i really enjoyed that that framework was really nice from coming from you right now uh, as we are reaching to the end of this podcast i just, i would really like to know what you know uh, i have just two final questions there first would be what strategies strategies do you employ you know while educating or maybe onboarding new users to mtap because acquiring users is not it's it's a very daunting task task to to you know in the market especially right especially when you are very new in the market what do you think how what was your initial approach to acquire new users and saying them yeah hey we have built something product that will help you network very efficiently what what was your initial call by using new users so uh, my my uh, my main tactic is plant yourself in a place where you can meet with a lot of people so okay. my initial tactic was i went into events where people will like to use our product i gave them the free usage of the product at that time and worked very closely with them as to how they were signing up what were the problems they were having how they were sharing their information and then have these people uh, help us market by telling their own friends about us so that's how we grew from 0 to 15000 people who are actually using our system like right Wow! Wow! So With zero marketing. So we have not spent a single ad dollar till date, and wow. it is purely by referral and people being feeling so happy about the product that they are sharing with other people. So be very, wow. very close to your customer. Follow with your customer. Listen to your customer, um, and <clears throat> implement the solutions that are causing problems to them. and communicate with your customers so those that is very very important to be in constant communication with your customer and listening to what they are saying and improving your product to it wow that's that's something really cool insights coming from you thank you for these insights and now uh you know the final question would be like what advice you will give to you know all the budding entrepreneurs or any any final words that you want to share with our you know our listeners to leave with you uh be ready to pivot we all as founders are very strong in our initial idea but our initial idea is as good as an idea be very find out who are your early adopters and work with your early adopters of your product and listen to them and be ready to change your idea or the product based on the feedback you are getting from the customer lot of times right. we fail and we create products which are not required by the industry or 
the product is required, the solution is not exactly what the solution user is looking for. So find your early adopters and work very closely with your early adopters to create your products. Wow, and be open for the feedback always, right? That's that's a fantastic approach that one can always look forward to when uh, in order to be succeed, successful in the industry, right? So thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us for this podcast. It was really nice to have you. And again, thank you for taking out your time on, on a, you know, on a, on a, for a quick morning session, right, for this for recording this podcast with us. It was really my pleasure to host you. And to all our listeners, I hope you got some insights. And, you know, even I, I will definitely give it a try to enter product. And you should definitely try out. This will definitely work out in some great networking social events. In fact, we have a tomorrow. We have one event going in, and I'll definitely talk about the entire product about this networking event, right? So, thank Absolutely. you for sharing these insights, and thank you for joining us for the podcast. It was my pleasure to see. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining.